Okay, so today we're going to talk about what to do after the customer agrees to book their in-home appointment. So you're in, you're in the house, that's super exciting, uh, but booking is not the end of your first interaction with the customer in the store. And once you get the okay to set up the consultation, we want to make sure we've done a few things. Make sure you get their ballpark spending plan uh, and write it down. That's the biggest piece with this one is make sure that you've talked budget with your customer and that you've written it down on the room guide for the designer and for yourself so that it can be addressed later if need be. Um, a good way to go about this if they haven't been super clear on what the amount is, is just to at least quote the upholstery that they're looking at or that they're considering and make sure that they're okay with that. Give them a ballpark of, you know, around twelve to eighteen hundred dollars for tables or um, you know, if they're looking at a rug, give them an average cost of a rug um, so that they can get an idea of what that room will cost once they've looked at everything with the designer. If the designer's in the building, definitely introduce your designer to your customer. Make sure you double check that the date and time that you have in the appointment is correct. If you can, book the purchase appointment at the same time that you book the initial in-home consultation. Um, it just lets the customer know that they have two appointments, one in the home and one in the store, so it reiterates that process. You want to make sure you explain the in-home appointment is usually about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, some can be less, some can be more. We just want to make sure that the customer is aware that they need to have that amount of time dedicated and that they are involved in the process in the home. It's not just opening the door and letting them in if they're working from home or something like that. We need to make sure that they're able to be engaged during that time window. You want to explain the process to them again that the designer will measure, they'll do a consultation, take some photos, they're gonna bring all the materials um, and they'll narrow down from the selections they've already made to what works best in the lighting and the space in their home and then work through some other options while they're there. Um, you wanna keep your energy high. I know it's a lot that you're going through, um, but for your customer, it's even more because they don't do this every day. Um, and so you wanna make sure that they're excited and that they know that once this is all over, they're gonna love everything that they're getting. Um, you want to explain that both, well, I guess all decision makers need to be at both appointments um, so that they can make sure to reschedule if they need to. If there's a husband and wife and they need to both be there, they need to make sure that their schedule allows for both of them to be there. Um, the worst thing is if you have an appointment in the home and one of the decision makers isn't there, their opinions don't get expressed until the purchase appointment. And that purchase appointment runs really long because you're changing everything on the fly to accommodate opinions that should have been present earlier in the process. You want to explain that the purchase appointment is about an hour and a half to two hours um, for paperwork and all of that to get completed um, to make sure, again, that the customer has time dedicated the day of that appointment and that they're not coming in on their 20-minute lunch break to try and just write up an order real quick. Um, if time allows, take your customer on a store tour. We'll talk a little bit more today about what a store tour is. Um, so those are some of the things that we wanna make sure just reiterated to your customer. You've mentioned all those things during the sales interaction, but sometimes it's nice to just kind of do a recap at the end for them once you've set up that appointment um, because they've taken in so much information, we wanna reiterate that as best we can. Um, and then introducing the designer, it is always, always, always best to be able to introduce the designer to the customer whenever you can, um, if they're going to be in their home. It sets your customer at ease because now they know the person that's coming out to their house. Um, it gives them a, an opportunity to bond or talk about, you know, the room that they're really excited to do. They may have a great rapport with you, but once you introduce the designer, sometimes you'll get so much more information because that customer is super excited to share all of what's going on in their, their design ideas with someone who's gonna help them create that room. Um, if you're not comfortable with how to do this or when to do this, work with your designer in the store and practice it with yourself and another sales associate and your designer, practice it, you know, let your designer know, hey, I'm trying to figure out, this seems awkward, whatever's going on, try and make sure that you find the best phrases and the best transitions to be able to introduce your designer smoothly for your customer. Um, reconfirming the budget. So like we talked about on the first slide, we want to talk about their price point. Um, most of the time when your customers are in the store, they may see that their sofa is $1,200. They may see that the chair is $1,000. 
but they're not adding those together to know that they're out the door total is going to be over $2,200. So make sure that you've given them those ballpark budgets and talked about that with them so that everything can go smoothly for everyone. It's a great opportunity to talk about design, or I'm sorry, with uh, financing during the budget conversation so that they know if they want to take advantage of the financing um, and what kind of monthly payment they might be looking at at certain dollar amounts. Um, booking with all the decision makers, you want to make sure everybody's there. Again, um, too much information can be lost in translation if the person's not there receiving information. It's important to have them present during the in-home consultation. I think it's critical to have your decision makers present at your purchase appointment. Um, and anything that's mentioned throughout the whole sales interaction, if you think that it may be important or something may tie back to it, just write it down. Um, if you have to have a separate sheet for your designer of notes and things that have come up in conversation that you think might be important for them to know, write it down. Separate sheet, type it out, whatever works for you. Um, when you're doing your price quotes, make sure that you're including their merchandise, less any discounts, fabric protection, um, third-party warranties, if you have ESA, things like that, um, your tax delivery, their total out the door. If there's a finance promotion that they may qualify for, I suggest writing down their monthly payment um, I just take that and divide it into equal payments, whatever they qualify for. So if they qualify for 12 months, I'll take their total, divide it by 12, and just say at a, an average monthly payment of this. Some of them are deferred interest, some of them are minimum payment, but that just gives your customer an idea of what they're looking at as a monthly commitment. Timeline. So right now, timelines are a little bit abnormal. And so we want to make sure that your customer is aware of what their timeline could be. Um, we want to make sure that we're, we're looking at if they're looking for something in stock versus something that needs to be special ordered, that we discuss both of those timelines with them because they can differ. Um, and in order to eliminate any confusion or miscommunication, make sure you reiterate their timelines. You'll feel like you're repeating yourself over and over and over and over. But if your customer is shopping multiple stores, multiple brands, different people have different timelines. So again, if there's any question for them, write it down for them on whatever you're giving them, be it your business card, the designer's bio, whatever it is, just so that they're clear. You don't want your designer to get out in their home and have your customer under the interpretation that it's going to be two weeks when it was two weeks for the stock item, but they changed their fabric. We want to make sure your customer is fully aware of what their time commitment is to waiting for furniture to come in. It's not that you can't do an in-home on someone that's looking at stock pieces. You just want to be clear with what their selection is and what their timeline is based on that. And a store tour. So the last thing that I like to do and I like to see people do with their customer after they've booked an in-home is to do a store tour. Um, it may sound kind of silly, but you're literally just guiding your customer through the store. Most of the time when your customer comes in, they are looking for one specific piece or one specific room of upholstery. They're not necessarily thinking about the tables or wall art, lamps, rugs, etc. that may go with it. Or conversely, they're looking at only area rugs and not paying attention to the upholstery that's sitting on top of it when they need all those things. But usually they have something in their mind's eye that they're focused on. So it's nice to be able to take a few minutes before they leave the showroom and walk through and just write down some of the things that they like. If you heard them comment on something, they may have at least seen one set. So start there and then walk vignette by vignette and just see if there's any other collections that they're liking. Anything that they really dislike will also help your designer get an idea for their personal taste so that whatever is suggested for them for tables and rugs will all be a cohesive feel in their design elements. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to take a very long time, but just a few different vignettes to get an idea of their style. And again, write down anything that they may comment on, good, bad, or indifferent, um, just to narrow down what pieces they like, they don't like, what styles, what finished colors even, if it's just a color that they like, um, if it's a metal finish that they like, that may 
you know, notate which direction to take their lamps or if we're doing metal artwork on a wall, different things like that. All those little details can really add up into a total room um, once the designer starts digging into those other pieces for them. And as always, if there's questions, please reach out. Our contact information is there. And I look forward to seeing you guys book more appointments.